So finally, what's happening with recovery? What does this all mean? Recovery is probably, I know I keep saying this, but it is probably one of the biggest ones that we will talk through because it's really challenging to define. Recovery is more than the simple replacement of what has been destroyed and the rehabilitation of those affected. The aim is to leave the community area more resilient than before. And this is something that you'll commonly see coming up in the definitions, particularly the notion of sustainability. So if there is something that is commonly experienced in local communities where they will talk about um, the need to recover from a cyclone, for instance, and cyclones often happen in that area, then they will try and recover in the process from a particular cyclone to ensure that houses and businesses are built in a way that can um, recover in a sustainable manner. So they'll try and build the uh, buildings or homes to be more cyclone resistant. They will try and also ensure that they use different types of building techniques which will ensure that it's easier to rebuild down the track or, or so forth. Um, so another uh, definition says, recovery is not so easily classified. This function often begins in the initial hours of a disaster, for instance, and days following a disaster event, and can continue for a month and in some cases years, uh, depending on the severity of the event. This is something that we'll definitely explore further when we talk about um, the two case studies over the next couple of weeks. Leadership is absolutely key with recovery processes. And again, this is something that I think we'll get much better sense of when we work through the different case studies in the next couple of weeks. We can see that the failure of leadership has a massive impact on the loss of life, the loss of first responders, on the extent of the damage, a whole range of different issues can um, come down to the decisions of just a few people in relation to these types of events. So again, recovery involves specific people and implies specific activities. The participants in recovery are numerous and I would argue probably definitely too numerous to list off on any single slide. Uh, I didn't say it earlier, but realistically, each of these phases could have an entire unit dedicated to them alone if we were thinking it operationally about how we would un, you know, unfold our, our recovery process. We would definitely need to do this uh, in an entire unit. So to be able to list off the numerous um, participants involved in recovery, it would just be impossible uh, at, at the level that we're just giving very broad brushstrokes in this particular unit. It does involve all levels of government, the business community, political leadership, um, community activists and individuals in, in various forms. The federal government also plays a large role in the provision of technical and financial support. So there needs to be things in place that trigger um, the financial support and the technical support from the federal government so that um, in the event of a disaster, those things are triggered and people in the local communities get that type of support. Or if the federal government's got a pot of money, then it goes to the state government and then the state government then filters that um, support, be it technical or financial support, providing first responders, defence force, police, um, state emergency service, regardless of what it is, there needs to be a process in place so that that can then um, work its way down to those affected communities. So, for instance, there's uh, state emergency service personnel here in Tasmania who have flown up to, um, up to North Queensland in order to help um, recover in those uh, local communities that were hit by Cyclone Debbie. Local government focus is definitely the decisions during the recovery process. So the federal government works up here to trigger those technical and um, financial support processes, whereas the local government is definitely about making decisions in the process of, um, of recovery and involving different types of organisations in that, in that process. So what principles does recovery require in Australia? There's a whole range of different principles that we work through in Australia when we think about recovery. 
understanding the context is number one. Successful, successful recovery is always based on an understanding of the community context locally. Recognising the complexity, successful recovery acknowledges the complex and dynamic nature of emergencies in communities. So for instance, um, as part of a police response or as part of the response by ambulance even, they might uh, think in advance about where the most vulnerable communities are. So if we've got a whole bunch of government housing and we know in that government housing there's um, uh, a lot of people who have disabilities in that government housing, then we'll know that in the event of an emergency or a disaster that there, those people will need to be evacuated, perhaps even early as a form of um, early response to whatever it is that might be coming in, be it a bushfire or be it uh, a cyclone or flooding or whatever, they are people that will need immediate um, support and evacuation and so forth. So complexity is, is a, key, a key area. Using community-led approaches is really, really important. It needs to be responsible, responsive and flexible around engaging communities and empowering them to move forward in, type, uh, in the time of recovery, um, as well as response uh, a lot of the time too. We need to employ effective communication. Successful recovery is built on effective communication with those effective, uh, affected communities and other stakeholders. And the message needs to be consistent and needs to be able to get out to those people in a way that everyone is on the same page and they have the same information. So they all know about where the evacuation centres are. They all know about what support's available to them around psychological first aid, for instance. All of that stuff is involved. <clears throat> and of course, acknowledging and building capacity is absolutely key as well. Successful recovery recognises, supports and build on, builds on community, individual and organisational capacity across a whole range of different areas. So the key challenges with recovery really are definitely costs. Obviously this can go from anywhere from just a few thousand to a few hundred thousand to a few million to a few hundred million to a few billion to a few hundred billion. So the costs are extraordinary depending on what the circumstance is and who is impacted by that circumstance and can be really, really huge. And of course, the process of recovering can be equally massive and equally complex depending on leadership, depending on whether or not people are prepared and they know what to do, depending on what the existing vulnerabilities are at the time of the disaster and whether or not these persist following it and perhaps are even sometimes, I would argue even often, exacerbated by that disaster. The death and injury of those tasked with coordinating and providing recovery efforts will obviously make things very, very difficult depending on what the circumstances are. And we saw that uh, very obviously in things like Hurricane Katrina and in um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of it the bushfires um, and in September 11 attacks. I got it out eventually. <laughs> Sometimes people just don't respond. So we might be able to go around in the event of a bushfire or a flood emergency and say, folks, you need to evacuate. You've been picked as one of the low-lying areas. We know that your place is going to be flooded. You need to evacuate now. Uh, the people can come to the door and say, stuff you, I'm not evacuating. I don't want to evacuate. I'm quite happy just to stay here and sit on my roof, or whatever, really. But at the end of the day, some people just don't respond. And part of that recovery process and the impact that it will have on their overall victimisation experience in the process of an emergency or a disaster will depend on um, how often and how people will respond and the degree to which will then, yeah, so how they respond will depend on how they recover if they've been given the things, the, the basic needs that they have, uh, if they've been provided that by, you know, Red Cross or whoever, all of those types of things will de depend on how people recover and the extent to which they recover well. Holy cow, we have covered some massive ground today. I don't know about you, but my brain and voice are hurting. <laughs>
massive, massive disparate body of knowledge that we have covered this week. Um, we've learned a bit about what, what PPRR looks like in Australia, a very, very little bit. Remembering that this, we could literally cover off on an entire unit for each of these things. One for P, one for P, one for R, one for R. So we've really given it very broad brush strokes in this particular lecture. We've learned about the difficulties with each of these concepts and you'll learn more about that in the online activities that we work through today and hopefully it'll be enough to sort of get you thinking about this phased approach and the difficulties involved with those phases with a bit of scepticism about each of them. <clears throat> um, and I guess that's kind of summarised in this little cartoon that I've put on the screen here. Let's see, ah, here it is. Your policy does not cover floods, earthquakes, or an axe of God. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Finkelman. Uh, and yeah, obviously learning about the fact that its insurance is not covered in this particular example. But it, it, it gets you thinking about, you know, the types of healthy scepticism that we need uh, when we're approaching different forms of processes because just because we have a process in place doesn't necessarily mean that... Um, everything's going to go according to plan A. Anyway, I hope that was useful for you and I will chat with you all very soon. Have a great week. See you later.